Okay, so it's 1983, the time when X-Men Apocalypse takes place. Of course, for the beginning where it takes place in 3000 BCE, where you get the original Apocalypse, or En Sabah Nur. Why is En Sabah Nur? So it's En Sabah Nur. And with the film that was in the 80s, you get a lot of 80s fashion. By a lot, I mean you see Nightcrawler Rock in a thriller jacket. <clears throat> you see Jean Grey with like heavy thick shoulder pads. And it's really hard to get past Miami Vice Charles Xavier. <laughs> but it's the 80s, makes sense. <clears throat> so, of course, this is X Men Apocalypse. This is the buildup to one of the most powerful mutants, not called Onslaught. So how do they make Apocalypse? <clears throat> well, they show him one of the first times when he, when he has his, his four horsemen, and of course it actually leads to what looks like celestial tech being used to do his first transference. That's how he gains more powers. I like that. It was nice. <clears throat> so of course he gets buried. And now in 1983, he is unleashed. And then he's picking his generals. If you've seen the trailers, you know one is Storm. They actually have, this is a, a younger Storm who's still doing the, the, the Street Thief part in Cairo. Which was nice. It added just that little bit of layer to the character. <clears throat> and then he tries to find other ones. We also get introduced, everyone gets a little... Maybe like two, three minute tidbit of, you know, here's here's Angel, here's what he's doing, here's Nightcrawler, here's what he's doing, here's Mystique, here's what she's been up to, here's Magneto, here's what he's been up to. So everyone gets these little like tidbits of here's what they've been doing. And the new characters as well, even though Psylocke, Cyclops, Jean Grey, Beast. They've been in other films, so it's really less of a reintroduction of these characters as it's more of a pseudo continuity for them. The only really true new character beyond Apocalypse is Psylocke, played by Olivia Munn, who doesn't get a lot of screen time. Most of what she does you see in the trailers, but seems to fulfill her role decently. Could have been a bigger role, yes, but there's a lot to cover in this two and a half hour film. So Apocalypse realizes that the weak have inherited the Earth, and it's time to cleanse. He gets his four generals, sets about his plan to pretty much kill all of the weak people on Earth. And his powers are impressive. It's a combination of genetic manipulation and matter manipulation. Early point in the film, he actually essentially pushes somebody into a wall, and then has the wall integrate over them. Very impressive looking. With the mutants, he's like, you know what? You have reached full potential. I will unleash your full potential. And this film's ending fight sequence is undeniably epic. Critics said that you don't feel anything for the characters. I would say there's more drama in the first 20 minutes of this film than there is in the entire film of of a Captain America Civil War. There are some heavy moments in this film. And of course, they do a great job with Quicksilver doing something kind of like his Days of Future Past, just a longer version of it. But it's done well. The right amount of 80s pop music to go along with it. It's good. 80 references here and there. Self-references to, well, you know, like the third film in a franchise. And then they have their ending battle sequence where the newly minted X-Men go against Apocalypse and his four horsemen is great. So great. They hit some really good high notes in this fight. So for the life of me, I have no idea what film critics were watching. I guess since it's not Marvel and Disney, it, everything else is just garbage when it comes to comic book film. So I thoroughly enjoyed it. You don't need to see it in 3D. You only really have 3D for the end sequence of the film. Beyond that, 3D is, is kind of kind of pointless for it. You know? So that's it for the, the main review. I know for the spoilers. So, Media 5. 
four, three, two, one, zero. Here we come with some of the spoilers. <clears throat> so, of course, when you first meet Angel, he has the angel wings. He gets them burned in a electrified cage fight with Nightcrawler. Olivia Munn's character, who worked for Caliban, who's a mutant tracker, essentially, knows of a guy who'd be really powerful to use. Now he's an alcoholic, because he's only got one functional wing. They then go through the process of getting metallic wings, and he's shooting the wing barbs everywhere. Since you've seen him fight earlier in the film with Nightcrawler, during any battle, he's fighting Nightcrawler. Olivia Munn's character is just kind of an enforcer, and they've simply given her just the, the katana. She now is closer to her current powers, or uncanny X Force powers, where there's the, the hard light whip, you know. So she's doing a lot more of their powers, which is nice. She eventually squares off with Beast at the end of the film. Storm takes on Cyclops. Mystique and Quicksilver have, the, have a little bit of talking time with Magneto, trying to convince him that what he's doing is going to destroy his family. The one that's left because earlier in the film, his wife and daughter get killed. Because he uses his power to save somebody. And they're like, oh, he's Magneto. So really feel for his character. They did a fantastic job. Mac Michael Fassbender is beautiful in this film. <clears throat> so, of course, you know, Apocalypse kidnaps Xavier about midpoint of the film. Havoc tries to stop them. This is where some Quicksilver shows up and saves everybody, except for Havoc, who apparently dies in the explosion. Helicopters land. It's Stryker. Stryker takes a lot of the mutants in. This is what leads to your Wolverine cameo. They release Weapon X, who goes on an absolute berserker rage, and killing everybody who's in his way. Got Wolverine in it. There you go. It's good. <clears throat> doesn't show up at the end of the film at all. Though. I was hoping for like a Wolverine Psylocke battle, which would have been pretty epic, but it doesn't happen because he's in the middle of the Canadian wilderness, which is fine. Storm was done well. You know, for the little bit of screen time, again, it's one of those things where people complain. There should be a lot more screen time, but it's hard with the amount of people you've got and the story and the time frame. Had it been two movies, yes, you could have gotten a lot more character development, but it's it's one film. And everyone got a lot more than you see in most films. The design of Apocalypse was done very well. I was trying to explain to my wife how he looks in the comics, where he's kind of taupe and blue with the giant letter A on his belt. So he's probably one of the more laughable looks in comics. But giving him a lot more of a Egyptian celestial sort of build worked well. So I'm going to say it looked kind of goofy. He looked goofy because we don't know how it looks in the comics. The comics would not translate well at all for his character. Salak's costume translated relatively well. Other people, costumes were tweaked just to make it seem much more realistic. So where's the ending battle? Apocalypse has figured out the body that he wants to transfer himself into. Xavier's. With Xavier's power augmented with his own, he will be in everyone's mind simultaneously and control the entire world. Like it's nothing. Well, he's already shot all the nukes into space. Well, why not use a telepath to control the world? Which then leads those to having to battle. An astral plane battle. With Apocalypse versus a Professor X. While this is going on, the rest of the X-Men are trying to see if they can stop effectively a god. Quicksilver tries it. Nope. Mystique tries it. Nope. Magneto, who finally turns on him, finally turns on Apocalypse, tries it. Nope. Cyclops is blasting away at him. Nope. His force field holding up the whole time. Fresh Rex is losing in the astral plane. He's crying out for Jean. Jean shows up. Jean helps fight in the astral plane. And then goes full Phoenix. Full bird of fire. Looks insane. Beautifully done epic moment. 
with Apocalypse being like, oh, okay. It's like, it has all been revealed. So, by this time, Apocalypse is now taking the combined force of a heightened Magneto, Cyclops, on the astral plane facing off against Jean Grey, and kind of Professor X. And then... Storm jumps in, and first incarnation of Phoenix. And it's enough to defeat him. And then, of course, the film ends them doing a, a danger room sequence, battling Sentinels. Your post credit scene is a cleanup crew picking up the bullets from the, the Wolverine battle and grabbing a sample of a vial of blood for X-23, as well as all the X-ray photos. I mean, for Weapon X, sorry. Leads probably to X-23. And it's going to the Essex Corporation, which I believe is tied to Mr. Sinister. So, hits all the right beats. Ask my wife, we've seen all three months, which one was your favorite? She was like, not Civil War. She liked it, but it was just kind of bland. She liked X no, Superman vs. Batman. She put that one in the middle, but she's a bigger fan of the X-Men films, and they're a lot easier to follow. So she actually puts X-Men Pocket at the very top. And I'll be honest, out of the three of them, that's probably the way I would rank them too.